right then. <laughs> this has the potential to be an absolutely incredible evening for photography. Problem is, oh, it's windy as heck and I am on one of them beaches where the sand just blows straight in your face. It's horrendous, horrendous. I'm not even sure you'd be hearing me on this thing. I'm actually trying to test, whoa. I'm at Pembrey Sands, Pembrey Beach in South Wales. Uh, and if, if, wait, I'm, trying, I'm trying to test the new gimbal for the M50, but as you can probably tell, it, it's not coping in this wind. It's not having it. The, the gimbal is not having it. It's just collapsing. Right, so over there, you've got Resilient Worms Head for those of you in South Wales who know that area. Let me just try to adjust this. Uh, yeah, this gimbal is not coping in this wind. It's a, it's a Crane, and M, Crane M2 gimbal. And I thought be, it says it's ideal for the Canon M50, so I thought I'd get one. <laughs> it's only just hanging on. Right, let's find a let's find a photograph. Look at this sky. It's amazing. To say I'm having a great time is an understatement. This is unbelievable. I'm not even photographing in that direction. But just to be here in this environment when the sky is kicking off all around me is unbelievable. Unbelievable. And I'm worried you can't hear me. <laughs> I'm really glad I hung it out. Let me clean that. I'll try to face that way a little bit. Oh, I hung it out, it started raining. But I'd found this composition that I thought was just perfect. It isn't the shot I, was, I thought I was going to get at all. I thought I was going to get like the cliche reflection. And then I stumbled across this branch which looks like it's crawling its way back out to sea. Ah, oh, it's, it's, just, it's just epic. It's just epic. I'm so... The sky in that direction is unbelievable. I can't see a photograph over there. I just can't see a composition. It's agony but what I've got here, so much detail in the sky over there. It's just gorgeous. I am worried that you're not gonna be able to hear anything, <laughs> but it's just beautiful. The sky is giving me so much texture, so much detail. And in the sand just in front of the camera here, I've got so much texture, so much detail around this branch as well, this part of a tree. I don't even know how it's got there. <laughs> it could well we be growing there, I don't know. Oh, but yeah, it's just unbelievable. I'm so glad. I see in the composition that when the rain came in, coupled with the, 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 the strong sand being blown across the beach, I just thought I'm gonna have to go and hide in the bushes or something. But I waited it out, give it five minutes and the rain's gone and I'm gonna take another shot. I've, I've worked the composition, I've taken a few shots here. Trying to keep everything simple, trying to make it short. The difficulty I had is with one of the branches here on the right hand side of the tree actually breaks through the horizon. That was the only thing I didn't like about the image. That might need photoshopping. <laughs> but otherwise, I just love this composition. Now, because it's so close to the camera, I'm having to focus stat. So I'm taking shots. I'm literally not even a meter away from it. I can't even remember. I'm that excited, I can't even remember. <laughs> I can't even remember my settings. I'm at F9. Uh, because I'm focus stacking, I don't need to go to f11 or f14. I'm going to take a fo focus, focus on the uh, on the plant there, on the on the tree, and then one on the horizon. And I hope that Photoshop doesn't need to crop in too much. There's some fantastic details coming in from the bottom right-hand corner of the picture. So I'm really, really loving this composition so far. I tried one, a vertical one in the middle as well. Didn't really like that so much. So yeah, this one it has to be on the thirds. Get it bang on. Keep everything square. I'm about, I'm about 12 mil on the camera, so yes, yeah, a very wide shot. I'm really, really pleased with this. And this is the first shot I've taken as well. Really pleased. I was clearly having a lot of fun in that video, weren't I? Good grief. It was an amazing evening. And uh, yeah, when, I, when I'm putting the videos together for you guys, I always, it's always obvious how much I've carried away sometimes I get in front of the camera, but it was, it was a really, really nice evening. Anyway, what I thought I'd do differently is, uh, A, talk to you about the image um, and 
obviously I'll show you the image in a minute, <laughs> but edit the image as well because I've never actually done a video showing the editing process. I've always been quite shy to that because obviously everybody does, does, does things differently. But I thought I'd show, uh, edit this video, uh, sorry, edit this photograph and talk you through what I like and what I don't like about it. And, and I, what I'll do is I'll, I'll edit it using uh, Adobe um, profiles because I normally, because I'm shooting with a Fuji camera, I normally, uh, I normally edit with one of the, Fuji, choose one of the Fuji profiles. Uh, but I'll edit the the the, the image using a uh, Adobe Landscape profile or something like that, just so it's a bit more uniform for everybody watching. Um, but yeah, um, I don't know if you spotted it, but in the video I made uh, well with the photograph I made a terrible terrible mistake, and I I, I can see it very clearly in the B-roll, and that is that I obviously put the hard edge grad far too well just just over the horizon, um, and in some of the B-roll you can clearly see where it's darker. And I'm really annoyed with myself because obviously I've spent a lot of time and, and I was very excited so I perhaps got carried away or whatever. But um, yeah, so I, because I was adjusting the camera so much and obviously I didn't adjust the uh, the, the grad in between <laughs> every single shot. It was a bit annoying, but we'll, we'll correct that now. So anyway, so let's jump over, have a look at the image and um, yeah, talk you through my, my, work, my workflow. So I don't spend a lot of time editing pictures at all, perhaps because I do it for a living, uh, photography for a living as well. Don't really want to spend too long editing a photograph but i normally do a quick edit as soon as i've taken the photograph say like the day after i've done the video or whatever and then if it's taken me a couple of weeks to get the video together i'll probably edit the photograph a couple of weeks later so i've had a bit of a break from the image and i tend to appreciate it more that way as well so yeah it's a good idea to do that anyway let's jump in have a look at the image so let's have a look at these raw files i've got the portrait version there as well um, which I didn't like on the back of the camera when I took it, but I think looking at the photograph afterwards when I've gone back, I actually quite like the portrait version. So, right, okay. So, clear error. You can see the the the, ND, the hard edge grad has come too far over here as well. So, that we'll, we'll correct that in a minute. But what I'll do is I'll select both of the images, portrait and landscape, and I'll correct this white balance because that is miles off. I remember it being a really warm, really warm evening. So, around about there. So, that's 6.6. Six. 6600k it's about right i won't touch the tint i think i think that's got the right sort of feel to it um, and i'll just work my way around uh, work my way down here i um i'll look at the exposure lift that up a little bit but I, we can't go too far i mean the exposure is almost touching if i press the alt key on the keyboard i can actually toggle and lift it until you'll see the red area now you'll know that's clipped down in the sky so obviously, obviously that's two stops over so we don't want that but um just shows how far i can go before it starts to clip but i'd say around about there looks where's that now about half a stop that's that's about right because uh, what i do obviously got both images selected at the minute so i'm just applying both set the settings to both of the images um what we'll do is we'll just now lift the shadows a little bit i don't tend to lift the shadows much if i can avoid it because it it tends to give start giving a HDR looking image. And I really don't like that, uh, that you can see detail where it should be dark, if you know what I mean. So I tend, tend to avoid that. So only lifting that 26 uh, point uh, up to 26. Uh, I'll drop the whites down a little bit because I think that might balance the exposure a little bit in the sky. Just get me back my pink, my pinky orange sky there. Oh, the whites are right down, there we are. Okay. So blacks, again, I'll touch them last, but what I'll do, just to give us an idea, drop them down. On the Fuji files, I have to be careful. Well, on the Fuji profiles, I have to be careful. The blacks are very sensitive. On the Sony camera, the blacks are nowhere near as sensitive. So let's just go minus 10 for there for now. And what I'll do is I'll put the contrast up. I always tend to put the contrast up about 10 as well, uh, just as a base. Just as, as I always tend to edit everything as kind of a, a default setting almost my own sort of profile and then uh, go through and fine tune um, so clarity you've got to be careful with clarity a lot of people overuse the clarity tool but i tend to be around about the eight nine um, mark just because you can see the details like, like this area here pop with the clarity it doesn't really need it. it's not the right sort of image but i thought maybe around the sand here would be affected by the clarity let's have a look so it's more yeah you've got to push it right up before it really does anything that's I never go above. I never go above 15 anyway. So let's let's just stick it on 14. Dehaze tool can be brilliant, but you have to remember you can you also you slide it to the left and get a lot of um, brings a lot of clarity to an image as well. Bring, lifts up the the uh, the darker areas. So if you've got a really muddy looking image, dropping the dehaze a little bit, very small amount can actually transform your image. So worth knowing. 
uh, vibrance I tend to use the vibrance more when I do the saturation but again that's more so when I'm using a Fuji file a Fuji profile so we'll use we'll lift the profile a little bit not much I never tend to go above 10 um, so that's that see the image is starting to come to life now so I'm really happy with that I never touch this um, the the tone curve I mean it's it's easy and you know, a lot of people tend to go for the standard S sort of curve like that but I, I, I don't tend to do it with the, with the tone curve there um, I tend to do it with the sliders at the top I'm not one for uh, split tone either or selective colors I don't tend to do any of that I leave that I know a lot of people create some amazing effects with that but I tend to leave that so slide past that sharpening by default the food I don't know why but Lightroom always seems to open it really quite high and I don't know why it does that so I always drop the sharpening on my images in Lightroom I'll sharpen them when I export them using the uh, the export um, module there and you can obviously go down here and tell it what to sharpen it for print or whatever there like that and I always sharpen it there or in Photoshop I think Photoshop does a better job Light Lightroom has improved massively with Fuji files though Sony's never been an issue my Sony files sharp and amazing in there but Lightroom's a lot better now with the Fuji files so I've got no issue with that noise reduction I avoid that like the plague um, I really don't like using that it just it just wrecks images I don't I don't tend to use that at all and obviously the profile is already that's for the sort of distortion of the lens is already built in there uh, I know a lot of you use the vignette in if I use it it's minimal I don't know why I even put it on sometimes it's nice just to soften the corners a little bit but that is literally all I do just down to about there minus six so going back at the top now let's have a look at the top of the image um, this is about when I'd add a grad if I need to so we just need to select one of the images now obviously uh, and what I might do is I think the, because I use I think I use the right filter press O now you'll be able to see what the what the grad's doing um, just making sure it's not coming over the horizon again I think I use the right filter um, I don't think the exposure is wrong. It's maybe a tad dark in the sky, so we could lift the uh, the exposure on the sky a touch. Uh, but what I want to do is lift the clarity in the grad in the sky and the dehaze. Just get, it gives me that depth, that pop in the sky up here. Um, I really, really like what the de what the clarity in the dehaze tool do on a grad to the sky. But again, don't go nuts, don't go too mad, and then just look at balance in the colour with the temperature so just move that up a little bit so we just get continue the orange theme into the clouds there that is literally all i'd probably do i wouldn't do much more um let me try drawing dropping it down a little bit yeah that's about all i'd do okay so that's that one done and what we'll do now is we'll correct that bar going across there this area here where the, where the i can't should sorry um so what I'll do is I'll move the brush along there. Again, press O so you can see what the brush has done. Uh, you can see it's gone through the branch, but I don't think it's going to affect it. Because all I'm going to do is lift that exposure. What I could try doing is lifting just the shadows. But I don't think the shadows, because it's so dark, I don't think it's going to touch the shadows. Let's lift. So you can see it's starting to go. I'll add a bit more to that area there. Of that area there so let's look at that exposure it's a stop that's how much is there you go so that's got rid of the problem with the of the uh, the grad on the horizon anyway nothing against hard edge grads i'm just rubbish with them <laughs> i always seem to get problems when i use hard edge grads um yeah so that's that okay what i do is probably leave that there for now um check that yeah okay oh it's a seven thousand now on the on the on the uh 7000k that seems a lot but that is that it was a really really warm day so anyway so what i'll do is i'll press apple apple and e if you're a mac user or command and e if you're a mac user open it in photoshop and i'll get rid of any little details as you can see that branch going through the horizon wrecks the image so we've got to correct for that and there's a few stones and stuff and imperfections um, what i'll use is the spot healing brush um, if you press j on the keyboard i'm a big keyboard shortcut user I don't tend to know how half of these things are called because I use the shortcuts to get rid of them to change the uh, to change the settings. So I don't really know. There you go. So just anything that jumps out at me that I find a bit distracting. A few marks on my screen which I which don't help. Um, but yeah, I won't go nuts. Literally. So what we'll do now is that once that's clear, there's a bit of a ghost in effect where the branch has moved. 
I'm not sure whether I should have, should have shot with a higher ISO and a slightly faster shutter speed just to freeze that branch a little bit, but it doesn't really bother me too much. It was very windy, so I don't think a faster shutter would have made much of a difference. Um, okay, so what we'll do now is we'll get rid of that branch. So over to the stamp, the clone stamp, so I press S for that. And then what I'll do is go on to 100% because I want to keep all the detail as accurate as possible. I don't want it to look patchy or look like it's been cloned out. So copying something exactly parallel to the item and just moving it down there. Um, I might have an issue here because of the texture in the sand. So let's go to the back to the spot healing tool. That does a really good job of copying area around us. There you go, I think. I take it down a touch. Let's, let's take it down to that knuckle where I think it looks quite natural then. And let's see where my clone stump stamp has wrecked. Has wrecked that sand. So I'm a bit big on that. So clone stamp has wrecked the sand a little bit there. So I'd probably have to go through and tidy that up properly, copy a bit over on top of it, but we'll leave that for now. Don't want to go into too much detail just yet. Okay, um, as far as the images go, I really like it. I think keeping it as natural as possible was a bit of a mistake there with the, with the stamp tool on the edge of that water. So let's just bring that back. Still a tad of a bit of a mistake, but there we are. That's That's fine, that's fine. Um, okay, what I could do now, dodge and burn, if I press O, you see the uh, cursor move over to the dodge and burn, so what I can do is I can dodge, which will brighten the areas, and burn, which is bur darken the areas, so what I want to do is dodge, and um, select highlights on the top here, only on a very, very small percentage, I usually use about 10%, and just look for the areas where the sun might have kissed the sand, and just lighten those areas up very slightly, just to give us a bit more of a 3D contrasty look. And then what I'll do is go over to the burn tool and do exactly the opposite and just darken some of the areas that the sand might have caught. So, sorry, that the sun might not have caught and just to give us that depth in the image. So I think that's about right. Can't see what else I'd do to that. Let's have a look back at uh, save that and jump back into Lightroom. Right, okay. So there we are. We've got the Photoshop version and the original RAW. So let's put, let's get rid of the original raw, let's call that four, so that will disappear. No, it won't, I have to select five for it to disappear. There we are, there's the new version. Um, really, really like it actually, I think it's got some nice, it's, it, it's, it's not fake looking, it's got some nice tones. I might up the contrast a little bit, drop the blacks a little bit, but that is pretty much it. That is pretty much it. Uh, what I do now is look at the cropping, and I think I got it pretty much bang on as far as in-camera cropping. I think I like it as it is, I won't change much. I'd like to have had that horizon on the third, but I've got to be careful because I don't want to lose that detail in the cloud. Um, street photography's taught me to keep my corner lines coming in banging from the corner. So we've got that, that line there coming bang on from the corner there, just make sure that's right. And what I'll do is unlock that now and I'll go slightly wider, slightly more landscape. Slightly more, there you go. Let's have a look at that. I think that's it, I think that's it. So yeah, pretty much that is all I would do. I wouldn't I wouldn't really, I might even drop the shadows actually, just to give a bit more, again, a bit more honesty to the image, because that you, you wouldn't have seen, because the light's the other side of that tree, you wouldn't have seen that detail. So I'm dropping the shadows, just adding a bit more punch to it. Perhaps up the contrast a little bit, I don't know. Shot them blacks. That's it. Job done. As far as composition goes, I really like it. It's a shot that I'm definitely going to go back and get again. Um, I like my settings. As I said, I think f8 would have been fine. I don't know, well, I don't know why I went to f9, but um, 160, or 160 ISO, perhaps I should have upped that just so I would have gone away from the eighth of a second exposure, perhaps gone for about 125th, that sort of thing. Just try and keep the, the branches a bit, um, a bit sort of sharper. But yeah, there's a, probably a branch there. I'd probably tidy up that, that bit of ghosting up there as well. That's probably the only thing I'd... Let's do that. Let's go back into Photoshop and... Um, right then, all I'll do now is just drop that... I think I went a bit too warm on the temperature, so drop the temperature down a little bit. That is it. 
But that is it. So the highlights look a bit bright now as well, so I might jot them down a touch. But it was bright there because that is where the sun was setting. So comparing that to the original RAW, what a transformation. What a transformation. And I really like it. I think it's an image that I'll probably print and stick up here on the uh, on the magnetic wall it's really really nice so yeah let me know if you think that there's any way i could improve the image or any any editing tips or anything like that let me know um, but yeah i'm really really happy with the image what i'll do is i'll edit the portrait version and stick that at the end of the video as well otherwise you'll, you don't want to go through that as well i'm sure <laughs> um, but yeah hope you enjoyed that hope you picked up some tips and let me know in the comments if there's any way i can improve and sort of show you my my editing process and uh, obviously i've just spotted another photoshop another clone clone error there i'm gonna to have to fix that one as well but anyway thanks so much for watching i hope you enjoyed the video and obviously i do hope you've learned from my mistake with the uh, hard edge grads so i do do keep an eye on them on the horizons but anyway thanks so much for watching take care and i'll see you on the next video thanks again